Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Planet Coaster, and today's episode is going to be kind of an in-betweener. Um, so I haven't decided if I'm going to label it as a whole new episode or as like a .5 episode, but um, I've been really busy with work and was getting over a cold and haven't had a ton of time to play the game, and uh, so as a result, there's not there's not really a substantial amount of recorded footage that I could put together for an episode, for a full episode at least. Um, and part of that is because of the reason I just mentioned, but also um, a lot of what I did was pretty experimental and um, anytime I'm doing that kind of stuff in the game, uh, you know, it's hard to record because a lot of times I'm deleting stuff that I've already done and redoing things and um, in, in production, when I'm editing all of that footage, it definitely uh, can, can be really time consuming. And so sometimes I have to decide just to not record at all. So anyway, um, <clears throat> those factors and one other major kind of announcement, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen it, but, uh, I'm going to be doing a collaboration with Commando Santa, um, and I'll put a link to his YouTube page in my description. Some of you are probably, most of you who are following me probably familiar with his, uh, project Buffalo Valley. And uh, yeah, we're really excited about the the collaboration. Um, you know, I think we both have different skill sets in the game that complement one another. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see where it goes. I don't want to spoil too much about the project. There will be more to come, um, and hopefully, we'll get our first episode out uh, towards the end of the month. Here, um, I actually just passed the park file off to him, and uh, he's going to be working on it while I go on vacation next week. So. Uh, anyway, much more to come on that, um, and don't worry, this park is not going away. This will still be a project of mine, but I have found in working in this park that it's beneficial to uh, take a break and work on a different subject matter. Just from a creativity standpoint, it really helps and um, you know allows you to kind of get outside the box and do things a little differently. So. I think it'll be a nice change of pace, um, but do not do not worry. This this project is not going anywhere. Um, and for some of the newer followers and subscribers on the channel, um, just so you know, just with my job and other commitments, um, you know, I would love to be able to do an episode every single week. But um, you can pretty much plan on an episode every two weeks. So you know, if if a couple weeks go by and you haven't seen an episode. Just know that one's coming, um, and don't uh, don't lose hope on me there. So uh, anyway, we'll we'll get into it here and kind of go through uh, most of the stuff that I don't have a time lapse for. There will be a very brief time lapse at the end of the episode, um, kind of detailing the work that I did around this flat ride. Um, but I did want to start by highlighting this fountain here. Uh, I think. I, I haven't really seen anyone else do this yet, so I don't know. Um, I mean, it's certainly possible, but I, I, not that I've seen yet. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, when, you, when you're talking about fountains in the game, there's some limitations. And mostly those limitations surround the size of the pieces that are already there. So, for instance, you have these basins for most of the fountain types. And that's about as big as the base of your fountain can get. Um, but if you use that same dome building technique that Silverette highlighted in one of his Planet Coaster College videos, you can actually create a much larger uh, basin for for your fountain. And then copy these around and you, cre you can create larger layers to the fountain as well. And it gives it that, you know, almost wedding cake type look that you see in a lot of fountains. And um, this one in particular was inspired by some of the stuff that you see at Versailles. Uh, you know, I loved the time that I got to spend there. I only got to go there for a day, but we were fortunate enough to be there on a day where the fountains were all turned on. And, you know, I think the most impressive thing about them is, is one, their size, and then two, you know, these aren't like, you know, lightly trickling fountains. I mean, these there's tons and tons of water um, in these fountains. And so I wanted to recreate that with this and really give the, the impression that, you know, it had some significant pressure um, behind the water and, and the different spouts and things like that. So i um, very happy with how it turned out. Um, and so, yeah, what I did was I once I kind of figured out what I wanted the, uh, the dimensions to be, I then used that dome technique to copy all of these pieces around. 
So you can see here, these are just those pillar bases. <clears throat> and, uh, and once I copied those around into a dome shape, I just sunk it into the ground and then, uh, you know, you, you kind of whittle away the terrain to give yourself uh, a, a larger water basin. And then I put it in just a, you know, I used the flat roof tiles to just make a base for it. Uh, and then push the terrain below that and then you just add your water line and then uh, I don't think I don't think I'll be able to find one necessarily actually there's one right here yeah yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> this technique I know people have seen before but turning the, uh, the splash upside down gives you a water texture on the surface and so I just use that uh, on the on the surface in several areas to really give the impression that you know the the physics here are working that the you know the water is pouring in here it's creating a lot of splashes and ripples and uh, yeah so I'm I'm really really happy with how that turned out um, when the fountains turned on I think it looks really really nice and that's the gist of it so yeah you get you start with the center you know center axis and you know you sort of build out from there so you you know here i used the those basins and added these pillars and the mermaids and this castle support piece and once you have it kind of lengthwise you just copy it to the other side and then use that dome technique to copy it around uh, and complete your circle so uh, definitely encourage you to try to use that kind of technique and and fountains and you can definitely get some things that uh that otherwise wouldn't be possible just in the base uh, pieces. So that's one thing that's been done. Um, obviously in the background here, you can see the coaster. So this is the first coaster and <clears throat> this thing was uh, was kind of a shit show to, to build, honestly. Um, and I'm working on custom supporting a portion of it. You know, it won't be, I'm not gonna do everything custom supported just cause it would take way too much time and you know the piece count would I don't necessarily think would uh, justify going that route so um, and and some of the, the feedback I've gotten from people who have already seen this is that maybe the supports are a little too thick um, you know but it, the next the next art shape down almost seems too thin so I'm I'd love to get your opinion on that in the comments and um, just kind of get a direction to go there. Um, I do agree that they're probably a little bulky, but so, you know when I've tried the smaller ones, it almost seems too thin. So um, I'll keep playing around with that, but that's the plan. I at least want to custom support, you know, the main parts that you see from the pathway, uh, just to give it a, a little bit more realistic look. Like you can see down here, I've done that, and I'll probably do some of the inversions in between as well. Um, the Q area is going to be heavily inspired by Monet's Gardens, um, and that's what this bridge is for. Um, I really wanted to make sure it was functioning, so the Q path actually goes over the bridge. Um, I'll be, I'm gonna replace these with, with something else, but there will be, you know, some, some nice flowers on here. Um, I've gotta add a ton more lily pads. If you've ever, I've, I haven't been, but I've looked at tons of photos of of the gardens in uh, Giverny and there's like it's almost it almost seems like there's more lily pads on the surface than there is water on the surface and so um, definitely gonna add more of those tons more plants and flowers and trees um, so a lot of work to do there but you get the gist of, of kind of the direction I'm going also uh, the coaster station uh, that's been I've kind of hit a brick wall there uh, honestly I you know, I, I, I've i looked at some stuff. I want to build something that's kind of loosely inspired by the Grand Palace in Paris. You know, I want that metal work on top, you know, with kind of an open air appearance where the, you know, the glass, it, it gives the illusion of glass like I mentioned with uh, S.P. Ridley's project. And, uh, you know, it just hasn't come together <laughs> quite yet. You I mean, you can see I've been kind of laying things out and trying to get it right. So... That's something that uh, I just need to spend some time kind of planning out better um, because it, it's, I'm not building building it based off of an existing building where I can kind of copy it exactly. I have to do it from source material and then kind of think about how the building would function in a, you know, a realistic way. It's very similar to uh, my Pleuraca 
project where I had I had an existing building that I wanted to duplicate, but it's it changes when you want to run a, a roller coaster through the center of it. I mean, you have to think about how it looks and you know how it would function from a structural standpoint as well. And uh, sometimes that that makes my brain hurt, and it's just a roller coaster game, so it shouldn't. Um, so anyway, that that's something that I'll continue to work on. Um, hopefully the next episode and i'm pretty confident that the next episode will have that finished um and as well we'll give a pov of the of the coaster <clears throat> and then this was the most substantial progress that i've got was on the swing here uh the cheroplane and uh really really love how this turned out um you know i wanted to give the the look of the limestone with that green metalwork you find in a lot of places in Paris, you know, in particular on the metro system, and uh, lots of flowers. Um, you know, the the hedges I think are an important aspect of it as well, uh, and so the covering is just supposed to be look like that metalwork, um, and then the base is is a lot of the the same limestone work you see throughout Paris. But yeah, really really happy with how this turned out. Um, and this is this is a look, honestly, that even though it will get repetitive, this is a look that I'll use for a lot of the a lot of the flat rides, um, you know. And I think that 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 makes sense from the context of a theme park as well. Just that you know, you if you think about a theme park, a lot of a lot of themes and design tropes are repeated throughout the park, and so um, this type of look is something that that I'll definitely repeat because I think it will kind of keep into the theme of Paris and. Um, will give kind of a cohesive look throughout the park. So, uh, yeah, I think the, the time lapse that I have for you guys is pretty brief. Um, and it's just kind of going into the, the way that I built this. And honestly, <clears throat> not to sound like a broken record, but the way I built this was using that same dome technique. I mean, you can see I've got a, a pretty much perfect circle here. Um, and on this part as well. And yeah, so I just started with the lining up a pillar in the dead center and then working outward and copying it all around. Um, I don't have all of it in the time lapse, but like I said, there's there is a very brief time lapse to, to check out on that. So anyway, um, yeah, stay tuned for a lot more guys. Like I said, uh, you know, collaboration with Commando Santa coming up and uh, I'm going on vacation next week. So the week after that, there probably won't be a video, but um, the following week there there will be so hang tight with me right now i'm sorry for the lack of content but um it definitely will pick up you know a little bit more normal towards the end of summer and getting into the fall so anyway hope you all have a fantastic day thanks for tuning in um if for those of you that want to stick around i will flip over to the uh brief time lapse here uh if not again thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode And welcome into the time lapse segment. Again, it's very, very brief. Um, you know, apologize for the the lack of progress on the park. I did want to get a video out at the very least, just to um, you know, just to ensure everyone that the park's not going anywhere. That I'm still working on it. Um, but yeah, I just with with my job and with other responsibilities, I just don't have the time to uh, you know to do a weekly video, unfortunately. So that could change in the future, but right now, um, every two weeks is is something you can can expect from me. So hopefully that's cool with you guys. Um, bear with me on that front. I know you know myself. I love it when creators can can do a weekly video. Um, that's definitely ideal. But um, bear with me on that front. So. Appreciate it there, and uh, and yeah. So getting into to this here, like I mentioned in the real time segment, I just use the same technique that I've used for the domes. Uh, you know, the technique that kind of that Silverette pioneered, where you know you start with the middle middle piece, and when you copy it over to the exact side, then all of a sudden your your access for the rotation is dead center, and it allows you to copy things around in a perfect circle. And, uh, and so here I'm just trying to flush out exactly how I wanted this to look. The, the source material that I used for all of this was mostly photos of the entrances to the Paris Metro. If you look that up, um, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. If you're from there or you've been there, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know, you'll even, you'll even see this look in New York. Um, some of the uh, subway stations in New York have this exact same appearance as well. 
um, and uh, sorry, there's there's a, I was copying over a color, so that was actually a good shot to see. That's what I was trying to accomplish with the coaster station, and I ended up just deleting it all and starting over. So I, I think what I'm gonna have to do there is is really just spend some time, honestly, physically drawing things out on paper, um, because. I, and this is this is the struggle that I find sometimes is that like that dome on the main street that I referenced that took me like eight hours to build. I mean, I literally kept having to delete things and retry things and tweak things to get it to look right. And it, you know, it's fine when you're playing the game. Like, I don't mind doing it. It's fun to me. But when then I try to go edit the video of that, um, it becomes really tedious because if you're like me, I really enjoy videos where you don't see a lot of stuff get deleted. You know, you, you don't watch five minutes of someone making something just to have them change it, which that happens to me. I mean, that still happens in some of my videos and it happens in a lot of people's videos. It's not like, it's not like the end of the world. I mean, we're just talking about video game, you know, footage on YouTube, but it definitely can throw off the, the episode that you're watching or the time lapse that you're watching. And so I try not to do that. But when I'm building something where where I'm trying to figure it out in the process, it definitely makes doing that a lot more difficult to to kind of build in a way that's that is very orderly and makes sense and is easy to edit and all that stuff. So yeah, so anyway, like like I said, I kind of hit a brick wall when it came to the coaster station on that front. And so um, yeah, I'm just gonna have to spend some time kind of drawing things out, I think, before I get into the game and really try to make it work in reality. But you'll have a similar a similar type vibe to this where you've got, you know, a lot of limestone with the green metal work as well. Um, that's, like I said, in, in the real-time segment, that's exactly the kind of aesthetic I want to have for a lot of the rides uh, throughout the park. And even though it will be repeating, I'll find ways to, to add variety the same way that I did with the Main Street. Like, I used a lot of the same techniques throughout the main street but there's still ways you can introduce variety in there and so that's that's what i'll do with a lot of the a lot of the flat, flat rides um you know throughout the park here so uh if you're if you have any any thoughts on the design i'd love to hear it um you know especially f if you're from paris or from France or have spent a decent amount of time there. Um, just if you feel it captures the look, you know, the only, th you know, personally, I'm really happy with it. I think that it does. The, the only thing that I might go back and tweak is just the color of the metal. It might be a little too soft. It's, it's hard though, because, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it's hard because, and I talked about this with some people on stream once it's, it's hard to always get colors right because sometimes a building will look completely different depending on the lighting of the day, you know, when the photo was taken. And the Eiffel Tower is a perfect example of that. Depending on the lighting, the Eiffel Tower can look very gray or it can look that, you know, dark bronze color um, that, that I kind of have colored it in the park, which I'm happy with. But same thing here. I feel like some of the photos I looked at, that metal can look very soft, you know, or it can look very dark. and and it's hard to always get right. So that, that's the only thing I might tweak, but other than that, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and yeah, you can see, I just used that technique to copy it all the way around, give it a nice circle. Um, I adjusted it slightly to try to match up with the queue, uh, entrance and exit. And I end up having to, um, just, <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't realize that the easiest thing to do would just be to, to change the entrance and exit area, which is what I do here. So yeah, so just changing the exit and then I tweak the entrance area as well so that it matches up and you'll see that in a second. And initially my plan was to have the limestone go all the way out to the path, exactly like you see here. Um, but I thought it would be nice to give it a little bit more variety than that. And so you'll, you'll notice in the finished product and in, and in the time lapse here, you'll see that I actually end up moving that section inwards so that it touches you know, the, the very edge of the ride. And I really like how that worked out because it allowed me space to, for those flowers in front along with the, um, with the hedges. So 
Yeah, and here's what I was talking about, where just, just by moving the entrance, instead of trying to move the whole structure, you can tweak the path so that it comes out exactly where you want it to and isn't, you know, isn't going through the actual structure. And then I end up changing these. So in the finished product, the, the metalwork in between the limestone on these railings is that same green color. Um, I was going back and forth on using this dark gray or not, but I ended up going with the green and I think that's the that was the right choice here. So at this stage, just copying those around, filling in the rest of the queue. And then, yeah, you can see now here how I indented that section of the ride. And I'm happy with how that looks because, again, it gives it gives some depth to the ride that wasn't there before. And then, like I said, it allowed me the space to um, to build these planters. And so, yeah, doing this, doing the same exact technique with these hedges. Uh, you know, I end up tweaking it a little bit, but I wanted that that outer edge to be really, really round and that's why I ended up going this route. It was more time consuming than just sort of tracing the path, um, but it, it, it kind of ensures that you get that nice, clean, rounded look. And depending on the park style, like there are some parks where I think it's better to have a more natural look, but given the subject matter that I'm you know, doing in this park where you think about Parisian gardens, you think about Paris, you think about the details, you think about um, the, you know, especially in the gardens, you think about how much time and effort has been put into the precision of how the gardens are designed and laid out and even the, the amount of time and effort that's spent um, ensuring that the, you know, like the hedges are trimmed appropriately and symmetrically and all that so those are those are the reasons that i'm probably being a little more anal about this stuff in this particular subject matter but you know depending on your park it's totally fine to have a little bit more natural look to it so um not much time lapse left all you're going to see here is uh how i kind of do the flowers and what i wanted to do was line up the tall flowers with these pillar bases and then the rest of that I just filled in with the white flowers. And I'm really happy with how that turned out because I didn't want to hide that stonework. Um, I wanted it to be exposed, but I also wanted the flowers to show from, you know, from behind the hedges as well. And so, yeah, just lining it up with those pillar bases made all the difference in the world. Um, so, yeah, about, about out of time lapse. Again, apologies for for sort of the lack of progress if you if you want to call it that um you know we'll get back into it here but did spend some significant time uh getting the park going for my collaboration with commando santa which i'm very very excited about um i'm not going to go into any detail about exactly what the park is but uh yeah really excited about that project um i'm gonna enjoy working with someone else in the game i think you can learn a lot by doing that and uh yeah, just pick up some things that maybe you weren't that good at before. Um, <clears throat> and those of you who are familiar with his work, you know that he's really good at at a lot of things like landscaping, park layout, things like that. He's really good at. And so I'm excited because those are some areas that I'm not not all that great at. Um, but anyway, yeah, bear with me, guys, on, on the amount of videos for the next month or so. And uh, we'll get back into a more normal routine. But thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day, and we'll see you in the next episode.